Hi, this is Mayor Joe Gann. I'm just taking a moment in the midst of all that's going on in this healthcare crisis to thank those who didn't even know they were going to be a part of it, but ended up being there for all of us. Our first responders, our healthcare workers, doctors, nurses, our 911 dispatch, police, fire, ambulance, and even those who are working in the grocery stores and the pharmacies. Our transportation workers who are driving the buses so those who are going to work or to the doctors or the hospitals can get there. Our public facilities that are picking up the trash for all of us and keeping our streets clean. Thank them all. They're there for us. Let's be there for them. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay safe. Stay home. Stay home. Stay home. We're in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. We're in this together. Let's get this done by social distancing, helping to flatten the curve while we stay at home, safer at home, and we'll get through this together. How does this look? Yeah, you're good. Back, I don't, I think it was the weather that overloaded the, um, overloaded the system, so we'll give a weather report at the end. But Eddie, Danita, Jan, Kathy, Mary Lee McBride, Larry, Larry Merriam, thank you for joining. Natalie, Carmen, uh, Heron Gaston, everyone who's on, thanks for, thanks for hanging in there. Try and pick up where we left off and just kind of, I know some people reached out and want to know what the numbers are and how we're doing and all that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll go through it. We lost a little bit of time there for thanks for coming back. I, I know a lot of uh, this kind of uh, telecommunications has been interrupted. Even the state's bond commission meeting, I think yesterday was interrupted and we're hoping that gets rescheduled. So there's been overload on the system and all that, but l let's just keep going. Unemployment claims, there's over 220,000 filed in the last 18 days. So we're not sure how much of this we're gonna be able to get out, so we're gonna speed ahead and get into the Bridgeport numbers. People asked about the virus and how it spreads. Um, it spreads like an aerosol. The virus spreads in air and germs can spread from person to person. These germs are airborne, so they can spread to their objects, to you or to me, in the air, uh, and then they're contracted by individuals. But let's review the numbers. I know people, at least if they get away from, get from this, they want to know kind of where we are and where we're going. These are so telling. Um, so we've got up to four, now we've got 429 uh, active coronavirus cases in Bridgeport. This is real time as of this morning. I think one of the biggest jumps, um, at least in, in percentages, and our numbers are still very low by comparison, but we have 10 people, uh, 10 deceased, 10 people have died from this. Bridgeport's up 83 uh, overall, if you think about that. That's a very high percentage. I didn't do the math in my head, but 83 uh, against uh, whatever it was yesterday, 300 and 350, let's just say, um, is, is a pretty high one day. It's our largest one day increase. Now, the bad news is that the last three days, or actually this week, each day has been the highest number of increases uh, that we've had. So that trend is, is not good. The overall trend though, by comparison, I will say is not as is not as startling. That's not to say that it's good news. There's a lot of bad news out there, and we're all looking for that that silver kind of sliver that we can talk about that's positive. And and I get that, and we're going to do that too. But I think we got to be real here too. New York, uh, for instance, had 799 people die yesterday. Think about that. 800, almost 800 people died in New York in one day. I mean that is just devastating. 50 miles, well, it's New York State actually, but with, within less than 50 miles from here. And we had, as you, as you saw in raw numbers, certainly minuscule uh, amount by comparison, but still we've had our largest jump. We've had three has been the, the, the um, death count, so to speak, in, um, in, in kind of raw talk here in Bridgeport, and now it's, it's up substantially. The state numbers, uh, coronavirus cases in Connecticut, um, as you'll see, is about 8,000, well, is the last count we had as of this morning is 8,781. 1,418 people are hospitalized, and there's been 335 people who have lost their lives related to the coronavirus in Connecticut. Fairfield County, not, not, nothing unexpected there, uh, leads the way, unfortunately, with 4,417 cases out of the 8,781. 665 hospitalizations in Fairfield County out of the 1,418, and 155, uh, just under half of those people that have died as a result are from Fairfield County. Um, again, these are, these are people, 
Um, these 4,417 people um, from Fairfield County, 155 are people that have lost their lives to this. I don't need to really remind us of this, but I want to just remember um, from a distance, you know, God willing and by the grace of God, if you're lucky enough not to, to be looking at this from a distance without um, feeling that you know someone that's impacted, um, these are people that are impacted. Um, you've heard a story, again, from New York, but someone who I know um, who went through with the blink of an eye from one day to the next, um, how her father uh, went to one of the most crowded hospitals probably in the country uh, to seek appropriate med medical help, not even knowing it was related to coronavirus. Went in six days later and six days of terror and horror of trying to work through an overcrowded medical system. Um, her father never came out. Um, during the process, couldn't get answers, and uh, was told by, by nurses and doctors, look, we, we were overrun with patients. Some of the doctors have had lost family members, yet they're still coming to work to treat other people. So as, as much as there is good news, and we're going to share and talk about some of that, and how our measures on social distancing here, and I think across the country are, are helping and helping in New York, um, one loss, one family member um, is tragic. Active coronavirus cases in Bridgeport, as you see, it stacks up. If you can see the numbers, if you can't, I'll share them with you. Uh, we have 429. Stanford has uh, more than twice that. It has 1,045. They continue to go up uh, at, at, at a comparable rate. Norwalk, again, is probably second in the state. Uh, Danbury, although it's not on our chart, is very close to that. They have 644. Uh, New Haven is right about with us, a little bit less now, 413. Um, and the surrounding towns, Shelton is 161, Westport's 152, Stratford uh, jumped dramatically. They almost doubled, I think, since the last time I looked, to 147. Uh, Milford's 130, and next door in Fairfield has 113. Uh, this is another charter graph that shows the numbers. It shows Stanford, Norwalk, Bridgeport, New Haven, just the numbers that I quoted. Um, and our next one will show how our chart is going up. I've used these geography, uh, geometry terms. We're up to 429. When we started charting it, it was nine. Um, and uh, you can see how it's still going up at that kind of angle that's not the type of angle you want to see in this situation. So I'm sorry we fell off, but if you can pick this up later, um, we're going to just run through some of the other stuff and then try and get this set up a little bit better. Uh, we can't do anything about the weather, so my apologies, but thanks for hanging in there. So we got you the numbers. I want you to know that the stay-at-home order, I want to thank people. I tried to do it at the beginning, but I'll do it again. The stay-at-home orders in Bridgeport, um, I know, and I think beyond that. I think throughout Connecticut, every town has taken a kind of, a lot of overlap on what we're doing, but some have taken different measures or precautions. Um, we've tried to be as conservative as we can without being um, too intrusive, and that's kind of the balance that we've tried to strike. Um, but right now, we're, we're at stay-at-home order. Uh, we're going to cross off days on the calendar. We're expecting this to be a couple weeks. Um, I hope it's less, but I, I'm not going to get anybody's hopes up. We've been struggling, but successfully making it through almost three weeks now. Let's hang in there. It's a little bit of a marathon. Um, I'd like it to be a sprint, but it's a marathon. And if any of you have ever done anything that takes a long period of time, I've actually run marathons. Um, you get in the middle of it, you just got to keep going and keep going and appreciate people. It's, it's not comfortable, it's, it's not fun, it's not enjoyable, but it's right. It's the right thing to do. And um, it does, and it is, saving lives. If anything you're hearing is positive out there, aside from God, you know, the, the tragedy, 800 people in one day uh, losing their lives in New York, that our numbers are now in double digits in Bridgeport, that the numbers keep going up at a rate that we wouldn't like it, although overall they're, they're pretty good compared to other places. It's that stay safe, stay, ho stay at home, and doubling down uh, with the recommended curfew is working. And people are, uh, we've gotten so many positive responses about us taking uh, proactive measures and not waiting until the numbers go out of line or not waiting to shut stuff down or not waiting to encourage people, and it's working. Retailers and restaurants have been supportive. They understand if they're closing at 8, people can go home. This is not a dramatic light switch at, at 801, uh, but it's working well. Um, there are a couple areas where I think we're going to have to be a little bit more visible, and we will, and I'll talk about that. 
But uh, bottom line is we're protecting customers, we're protecting residents, we're protecting staff, and clearly the community. Um, retailers and restaurants, we appreciate your support. Uh, the grocery stores, we appreciate your support and what you're doing. Let's support our restaurants. Let's support our retailers. Uh, Bridgeport, your locals, let's support each other. Understand the customers may be picking up or having meals delivered after that. And staff may be working a little longer. And we know that there's essential workers. We all know by that kind of uh, difficult to define whether you're essential or not essential on, uh, on paper. You know whether you should be in or should be out. Let's do our best to keep it going. Um, so what are our objectives? The hospitals are, are currently still in a surge. They're in good shape, but they're in a surge. They've asked us to push the stay home policy, which we are. This prevents the spread. We agree across the board, across the country, around the world, that this works. Uh, and it, it will prevent or help to prevent, and we don't know for sure, help to prevent a resurgence. Um, guard health care capacity from being overstretched. It'll guard health care supplies from being overstretched. Understand all those things that may not touch your, hopefully never touches your lives, our health care capacity, our health care supplies. Um, these are the things that you hear about on TV all the time. Do we have enough? Do we have enough? This is how we do our part to make sure that we have enough. Uh, and we're protecting the vulnerable population. We're protecting ourselves. We're all kind of exposed to this and all vulnerable. But some are certainly a higher risk. Gradually adjusting restrictions in real time based on the spread and recovery of individuals impacted by the virus. These are our goals, our objectives. Um, why don't you go back one more to the sign? One more, right there. Again, you'll see these around as a way to get it out. There's nothing better than communicating because people get it. People are smart. People care. People want to help. We want to look at the end of this thing and be able to go, yes. We got through this as best we can, and what they talked about is these terrible numbers. Boy, did we, we push that, um, did we push that, flatten that curve. You know, we did our part. And so these signs are to remind us to stay safe and stay home. Um, it, it, it's, it's a notice to residents and visitors. So when you come off the ramps, if you're driving around, you, we put these around like there's a, like there's a public persuasion campaign, like a, like a political campaign, and it is. But it's about you, and it's about me, and it's about being healthy, and it's about being safe, and it's about saving lives. Uh, we put 200 of these uh, yard signs or these signs around throughout the city. Say, stay safe, stay at home. Uh, we put them right in the middle of the 250 flowers or daffodils that are in broom, bloom. That's not a bad little scenario to have. So we got some important dates. This is a, an important date for um, many major religions, um, religious leaders and citywide prayer. We're going to ask people to pray. Uh, at 6 o'clock today is the day of prayer. Remember, tomorrow's uh, Good Friday for many, Holy Saturday, and then Easter Sunday. Passover started yesterday. Um, Ramadan begins uh, in a couple of weeks. I think it's the 23rd is the beginning of the Ramadan, which uh, is, is another holy uh, period of time, a holy day. Uh, it's the beginning of, of, of that period uh, of, of religious observations. Um, and tomorrow on Good Friday, we'll still be here, albeit the weather permitting and, and the internet permitting. Um, we asked Jim Himes, our congressman, to join us, talk a little about some of the programs, what else might be coming down the pipe that could be supporting us on the economic front as well as on the health front from a federal perspective to make sure that we're able to get through this, one, health-wise, and two, to get through of it, get through it financially and economically. I'm just going to touch on uh, this stuff. We've covered it. But because of the technical stuff, um, I know we're losing some people, but I want to make sure we remind people. We ask all faiths to join us at 6 o'clock and to pray. We don't have to do this together online. We can do it together, though, offline. Uh, prayers are powerful. I know you, many people uh, want this opportunity, so we want to do it. And we're doing everything we can kind of on the, with our feet on the ground on the human level. Uh, the power of prayer, I think, is, can never be underestimated. I'm asking all of us in Bridgeport and beyond to invoke that power uh, in unison at 6 p.m. today. Um, religious leaders have assured me they'll do their own, whether they tele telecast it or not. Uh, we can all play a role in this. It's dedicated to our city and those who are in recovery who have been claimed, as well as other individuals affected by this virus. 
Uh, on a, on a, a, cut, a little more basic, kind of just remember tomorrow is Good Friday, certainly for religious, but it also means there'll be no meals served at our Bridgeport Public School sites. F food service sites are closed tomorrow, tomorrow, April 10th, on Good Friday, because it's a holiday. Obviously, employees are recognizing, we're allowing them to recognize the holiday. Thanks for being supportive of that. Uh, again, join us tomorrow with Congressman Himes. Um, social distancing doesn't stop on the holidays. Let's do it. We're all going to have to be enjoying our Easter Sunday uh, with or without chocolate and, and colored eggs in a healthy way. Uh, kind of think that through. Many people are going to church. There'll be drive through theaters. People will be attending in their vehicles. Do the best you can. Some of it will be on Zoom and Facebook. I know a number of the congregations are doing that. Really appreciate that effort. Stay at home awareness throughout the city. Thank you for supporting our community. Uh, hashtag, I need you. We need each other. I need you to survive with a big heart at the end. Um, city business under certain protocols are continue to be followed. Um, April showers bring May flowers. I can't believe you made me say that. Uh, spring cleaning, Madvax are out yesterday. Way to go, Department of Public Facilities. Uh, they're in the east side today but i'm going to tell you love you but if you don't move your cars we can't clean the streets i don't want to hear the complaints if you didn't move your cars uh streets between east, east main street uh councilman maria valle helped me with this and knowlton avenue move the cars to the odd side of the street move the cars to the odd side of the street Stray, stay home stay safe move your cars and together keep safe and keep our city clean. There's a picture of a map showing where they're going to be. I'm going to run through some quick media inquiries so that I can give my communication staff a little bit of relief so they don't have to uh, do double duty. Can we get a copy of the budget summary today? I would say yes. Nestor Nawak, can you get a copy of the budget uh, for Mike Mako um, somehow, some way, or at least a summary of it? Um, I would appreciate that. Um, we a question about uh, are you issuing a release on a new hire? Uh, I think they're referring to the potential for a new health director. We have a person in mind. Uh, if the if the offer is accepted, I don't know the latest state, but we do have a top candidate that was offered the position. There's been some media coverage on this. Assuming that goes, it will be submitted to uh, the city council for final approval. Um, so I look forward to that process as well and getting a permanent health director in. Although I will tell you that we've had uh, great leadership. Uh, from Tina uh, Batista at the health department through this terrible pandemic. She's on, she's on top of this with her department, and I want to thank them and our other city departments for working through this. Uh, last night's public, uh, another question from the Connecticut Post from uh, Mike Mako. Uh, three council members expressed concern about a group of people out late drinking, lollygagging, huh, around a variety, convenience, and bodegas past midnight. Well, that's is the type of stuff that we will uh, send a message out on uh, clearly. Trumbull Avenue, Reservoir Avenue, this is where the problems, the last bit of problems exist. Everyone's been phenomenal. I've gotten a lot of calls about how quiet it is, how people feel this is the, the, the right measure. Maybe we should do more, but we'll stop this stuff and get a message out there. This is the type of stuff we will break up. It is a violation. It's a violation of our recommended curfew. It's a, it's a violation of five, four, five or more people gathering, social distancing, uh, we need to step up, whoever, if you're listening. My guess is if you're out at midnight, you may not be listening. We're going to catch your attention, and we appreciate it. Um, what's going to be done to shag these groups? Shag these groups. We're going to shag them, um, and uh, we'll see if we have to give tickets out. A question about the police department. Two Bridgeport police officers uh, tested positive for coronavirus. I'm told that's true. Uh, I think that's been out there already. Um, they have been quarantined. Other officers have been tested, and appropriate measures have been taken by the department to ensure the safety of all, all the officers. And by the way, I mean, they've done a phenomenal job. One, one is too many, but it's, um, you know, I don't want to go through what we're seeing in other departments, especially some of the larger departments. Uh, this is run through it. I want to thank the leadership and the membership of our Bridgeport Police Department, and frankly, the city overall for taking quick, strong measures. I read an article today saying New York is, I mean, uh, New Haven's requiring them to wear uh, facial masks and so on. We've been doing that for, uh, for weeks. 
um, and gloves, and they've been stepping up. They've gotten the, uh, the N95 masks, uh, even the uh, surgical masks. We want them to be protected. We want everyone who's out there doing their job to be protected. Thank you so much. Sorry about the technical difficulties. We'll be uh, abbreviating tomorrow. Uh, there's a map in front of me I just got yelled at. You want to go to the next one? Oh, uh, local power outages possible today. As you're seeing or not seeing today, local power outages are possible today. I'm now the weatherman, too. Uh, this is wonderful. You never know what you're going to do when you're mayor. They told me to show you bandanas. Um, this is my bandana for those that can see. Um, we're going to this. Wear these for, in all seriousness, wear them uh, when you're out. That or this or whatever it is that you can do. Uh, the main threats associated with storms, severe storms are damaging weather, gusts, hail, trees and power lines. So on top of a pandemic, on top of people being knocked out of work, on top of your jobs and, and being forced to close, by the way, Mother Nature loves us as we go through Holy Week. That's why I'm saying we should pray. Uh, we got a little bit of weather coming our way. UI customers, it's the number as you know, it's 800 or you don't know, 800-722-5584. I've called it myself. Call it if you need it. Let them know if there's a power outage. Heavy downpours, heavy downpours with strong winds later this afternoon. Another reason to say, stay safe and stay home. Um, these are the ones that can't stay home if you can see the screen. Our doctors, our nurses, uh, our healthcare providers, they can't stay home. Shout out, but be there for them by staying home. All on the front lines, I got the postal workers, I got the grocery store workers, I got the sanitation uh, collectors, and the ones I'm missing are gonna, I know they're gonna text me and say, you don't love us, I do. I just didn't go through the whole list. Thank you for being there. I wanna thank our communications department. Our other additional help that we have here, the supporting our communications department, our economic development department that has given us manpower, our health department, our IT department that we called in a panic in the middle of this today, um, WICC 600 AM, who's been around for so long, and Radio Cumbre, who's always there reaching so many people that I wouldn't be able to reach because of my inability to be, be fluent in Spanish. Muchos gracias, 1450 AM. Pablo, thank you for all that you do. Again, join us if you can on your own, together but separately, for a prayer at 6 p.m. today. If you need it, it's Facebook and Twitter at Joe Gannam. I know that name well. And Facebook at Bridgeport CT. You know that name well. Is to thank you again in this together. See you tomorrow. Sorry about the interruptions. Be safe. Hi, this is Mayor Joe Gannam. And now more than ever, I'm calling upon you, all of us, to stay safe, and stay at home. Now it's our time to step up, to support our first responders, our healthcare workers, all those that have to be out there. Support them by staying safe, staying at home. Let's flatten the curve. We're in this together. We'll get through this together. Thanks so much. Stay safe, stay at home.